Store workers and customers, what's your people of Walmart story? I worked at a Walmart for about two months. The weirdest thing I saw was an obese lady on a scooter run over a fat kid in the candy aisle and then threaten him because he almost tipped her. Security was called and she demanded to receive her items for free. Eventually, we just let her take the stuff because it was only like $5 worth of Skittles. What she really needed was tip assist. And some really good old-fashioned skeddy wrestling. Ah, uh, this is why some crap people continue to be crap people. You mother frickers gave them free skittles when they caused a gosh darn scene. Just like my spineless corporate slave of a manager when I worked retail. I worked at Walmart last year as a cashier, and a woman came up to my register with nothing but a pineapple and a damaged one at that. It was 10pm on a Tuesday, so it was a slow night, and she demanded I give her this pineapple for 25 cents because it was damaged. I didn't see any damage, so I asked her to show me the damage. She promptly ripped the top greens off the pineapple and said, See it now? I called my manager over and he said he can't sell it to her for a discount, and he's sorry, but she can get another one. She cursed, threw the pineapple at me, and walked out mumbling about needing a cigarette. She was a prime example of trailer trash, but damn, she threw that pineapple hard. Fun fact, if you can pluck out the greens easily, it's a ripe pineapple. Usually the best metric I find is to smell it and see if it actually smells like pineapple. A lot of yellow is also a good indicator. You're correct, the most yellow while not having mold on the bottom is the best metric. Properly ripened pineapples are completely yellow, but they're never picked that way commercially and do not ripen off the plant, because they don't ship well when ripened. Here I am talking about a nightmare from my old job and suddenly I know how to pick out the perfect pineapple. So last year I worked at a Walmart supercenter as a cart pusher. You tend to see a lot of strange stuff in the parking lot, so all the weird crap doesn't even get your attention after a while. Part of the cart pusher's job is to bring back the store scooters after people leave them in the parking lot. One day I see an old woman outside the store just sitting on a scooter. This lady must have sat there for a good two hours before finally getting up to reveal a gigantic brown stain all over the lower back of her hoodie running up and down her pants. This obese lady who saw the whole thing comes sprinting up to the scooter and sits down on it before I could even clean it. She looked at me and said, I don't care, hun. It was the last one left and my legs is killing me. When someone is so large that they'd rather sit in a person's waist than walk, you know that they have a serious freaking problem. I feel like there's going to be an awful lot of humanity in this group of stories. Maybe I should attempt to resist the urge to make judgmental comments for once. My privileged and ailment-free butt doesn't get to cast stones at people who have trouble walking and controlling their bowels. This was back in the late 90s. I was working at Walmart as my first job as a teenager. I was floated to the garden department one day and there was a guy looking at lawn fertilizer. I walked over and asked if he needs help. He said, Not now, just looking at the different kinds you have. Pretty standard reply from the guy, so I said, Okay, let me know. I walked away and then swang back in about five minutes. The same guy has proceeded to rip open about ten different kinds of fertilizer all over the ground and is rolling around in the stuff. He's also taste sampling the stuff. I call my manager because I don't want to deal with it. Security escorted the guy out of the store and called an ambulance in case the ingestion of the fertilizer hurt him. I was expecting the story to end with, and the guy tried to buy all we had and then the feds showed up. Instead, crap osmosis. Saw an old man take a dump on the floor of the bread aisle once. I worked at Whole Foods and on shift, a person in dairy dropped a load right in the middle of the aisle. They must have been extremely lactose intolerant. What is that? Milk? Go oh, no! <laughs> Mother's Day 2013. I was CSMing and handling the day as best as could be expected on a Sunday holiday where the employees were mostly female mothers. We had 13 call-outs and 5 no-call, no-shows. I had 5 poor women to handle the whole Sunday. Lines were long, I knew it. I didn't have anyone in the store coming in to help, management couldn't spare anyone. They understaffed on purpose. So I hear a call over the radio that someone has busted an aerosol can and they needed one of the maintenance associates on shift to deal with it. Apparently some jerk teenagers thought it would be funny to pop about 5 air freshener spray cans and let them spin and spit eye stinging chemicals. I'm getting yelled at by a blue-haired old woman about the lines when I get the call that made me regret waking up that day and coming to work. Sharon, you see that kid in the orange shoes to your left? Stop him. Okay, why? He messed himself and is tracking feces all over. I'm trying to find his mother on the cameras right now. Oh great, now I have a feces-covered five-year-old to look after on top of everything. Did you find the mum yet? 
Yep, she was in the parking lot doing smack. Cops came, I had to mop up the feces, mum went to jail for possession with intent, neglect, and other felonious activities. The kid got cleaned up, I bought him new underwear and pants and socks, and I hosed off his shoes. He went with a social worker. I wanted to quit after that day. Someday that kid will post on future Reddit about an awful time he had as a child, and the only highlight is the kind Walmart employees that got him clean underwear, pants, and socks. He won't remember who it was, but he'll wish that he could thank you for your kindness. Uh, Thank you for your kind words. I only did what any compassionate human being would have done. It's amazing how many people bring their non-service animals into the store. I don't have a problem with dogs and such. But when I see the small dog you're carrying scratch and dander falls into the vegetables you're looking over, we've got a problem. Once a woman brought a bird into a fast, casual dining establishment at which I was employed at that time. I told her she could order and pay, but she needed to wait outside because animals weren't allowed. She pointed to a service dog and demands to know why that dog can be in the store and not her bird. I informed her that this dog was a registered service and support animal that had been certified in its role and is probably vital to its owner's daily life. She starts screaming, and I mean screaming, He's a healing bird. I love him. He helps me. Now birds, you may know, don't really appreciate loud noises accompanied by sudden movements of the arms. She's also flailing her arms, and it takes off flying around the store. Chaos ensues. People are mad, and I no longer have to try to handle this lady because her friend has caught the bird and is literally dragging her out. The dog was fine, though. My town has a bird guy, an older gentleman whose budgie rides around on the bill of his hat. He takes the thing everywhere. Nobody seems to mind because it always appears to be totally under control. I once saw him in Walmart with a little perch in the shopping cart for his bird to ride on. Not a worker, but standing in line one night, a lady seemed to be having a hard time being a parent to her three-year-old daughter. At one point, the kid asks if she can have a candy bar that was next to the register. The exchange went like this. Mommy, can I have a Snickers? I don't give a damn. Kid tries to reach up for candy. I can't reach it. Can you help me? You want me to help you get the candy? You need to get a freaking job. Sounds about as classy as my cousin. She was potty training her four-year-old and the little girl says, Mommy, I have to poop. Only for my crap heap of a cousin to yell, I put you in a freaking diaper. Use it. Well, I thought this would mostly be a mildly amusing series of cutaways, like from the excellent TV show Superstore. Little did I know how sad it would get. I worked at Walmart in the toy department 10 years ago, right out of high school for extra money. The amount of parents who would drop their children off in the toy department like I was a babysitter was out of this world. By the time they'd left it, it would be a disaster area. On more than one occasion, I'd see them running down the aisle with their arms outstretched, just knocking crap on the floor. When the parents would come back, there was no, hey, let's pick all this up, they'd just leave. I only lasted a few months, I actually quit a week before Black Friday because we had an instance at our morning meeting where some of the veteran employees were telling us what to expect on Black Friday from customers. Examples include being spat on, pulled by the arms, knocked over, shoved, tripped, screamed at, hair pulled, threatened, etc. I went on break and didn't come back. Not worth minimum wage. Ah, that sucks. I can sympathize. I lifeguarded at a public school for several years in high school, and people did this all the time. More often than not, the kids under the age of 10. I yanked them out of the deep end, and they didn't have any parents or guardians with them. Unbelievably frustrating in both scenarios. You're the person who brought this child into the world, which means you're responsible for him or her. The worst part is that these people are the ones to raise lawsuits if their kid gets hurt while under your watch. I spent many of my summers at the local pool, but in my case, I was old enough to bring myself there, and it wasn't my parents just dropping me off. And older than their posted, 13 and under must be with an adult sign. That pool actually did pull unattended children out when they noticed them, and get the police involved in returning them to their parents. Since nobody involved ended up amused by this, it didn't usually happen repeatedly. The one that sticks out in my mind is this couple of really overweight folks. That in itself is not such an issue, but it's the smell I remember. It hit me before I saw them, the very distinct smell of festering, unwashed body. And naturally, they came straight to me to ask for things. Ugh, I have a few of those where I work, and the two of them have no sense of personal space. I've taken to holding a large item in front of me as a spacer whenever I see them come in. You can submit your own stories to be featured here on the channel. The story submission link is in the description below. And if you want to listen to some vibey music in the background, check out Easy Mode, also linked below, and subscribe. Oh, I have so many people. But actually, why don't I introduce you to another worker? Meet Gary. Gary is 81 years old. 
He also fought in the Vietnam War. Gary is a short little cute old man. However, Gary is also freaking crazy. Let's go through everything Gary told me before I left for school. The Kennedys committed the atrocities of September 11th. Yup, the entire gang was in on it. JFK, RFK, Ted, Ed, and John. Why else do you think JFK and RFK were assassinated? Agent Orange is for wimps. Obama gave two statements after Charleston, one to the country and another to his cabinet that said they were going to take all the guns. That school shooting was fake, because Joe Biden actually adopted all the fake victims so he would never see them again. He owned a bunch of real estate in California and owned adult video stores. He actively went to adult flick conventions and said that he was in the committee to determine if someone could be a adult flick superstar, so that meant he got to do the deed with a bunch of girls. Blacks by law can't be police officers. If you want to woo, yes, he said it like Ric Flair, a female, you just gotta ask me for some tips. All right, thanks, Gary. I have a girlfriend, though. My girlfriend's got a tight hoo-ha. Okay. Gary wasn't just delusional. Gary also didn't have a filter. Woman with a large chest walks past him. Did you see the bosom on her? And she heard him. John, if you don't go on break, I'm going to tie your braces to the back of my car and tear them off. I did the deed with my girlfriend last night. Oh, okay. I was pounding it from behind. Gary, aren't you like 80? Oh, don't worry. I took a pill before I did it. Gary wasn't just delusional and obnoxious, he was defiant. From day one to my last day, he had a theory that the boss was out to get him and that the boss always got upset over petty things. He used to say, Frick that wang sucker Dave. But our boss didn't get upset over petty things, and his name was actually Bill. I miss Gary's crazy butt. Gary sounds awesome in small doses. When I worked in another department, I loved Gary because he was like that old man who sits on a porch. He would wave every time he passed because he was insistent that there needed to be someone at the cash register 24-7. There didn't need to be. When we started working together in the same department, we became enemies. I was being groomed to take over the department when the department manager was going to retire later that year. I'd started in April and they made the announcement in June. Gary had been there since 2011. I was 18 and he was 81. He didn't like it in the slightest. So we started butting heads constantly and he would threaten me with ridiculous things like tying my braces to his car. So then I responded right back. I got a wireless speaker, put it in the cash register place and played high-pitched noises until he yelled, What the frick is going on? And he would make ridiculous claims like that I'd set up a wire trap with a shotgun so when I came in today I would get shot, but luckily I saw the wire. I own a business in front of a supercenter. This morning I came in and noticed my dumpster was stuffed full with Walmart's garbage. I reviewed my HD camera and saw their contracted parking lot sweepers throwing over 20 bags of garbage away at 5.15 in the morning. I got in that gosh darn dumpster, pulled all those bags out and filled six Walmart carts up. I rolled them right on in front of the store and then I went back to my office, called the manager and told him that the next time I would call the cops for illegal dumping. Being in front of a Walmart sucks sometimes. There's a huge dumped cat colony and the place is a bum magnet. Thanks for reading, I just had to get that off my chest. Ah, that sucks. I think I would have called the manager first and had them send someone to get their garbage out of your dumpster. No point in you getting filthy because of their stuff up. Oh, I imagine there was a fair bit of catharsis in cleaning that stuff out and airing out all of their literal garbage in front of the store. Maybe not the most adult reaction, but I get it. So a couple of years ago, I was in between jobs, I needed loot to pay the bills, so I figured that I'd take a job at Walmart until something better came along. I ended up working in the lawn and garden section, which is actually fun when you get to play with the plants all day long. However, I wasn't aware that Lawn and Garden also does all of the holiday setup and placing said product on the floor. Fast forward a week before the public school systems were in session, I had a cart full of notebook paper, pencils, trapper keepers, etc. that I was trying to put on the shelves when a sound ripped through my eardrums that was similar to the ones that are typically only heard on the Discovery Channel. Several decibels too loud, the best I can describe it is cats being lit on fire by their tails and being chased by rabid wolves. I looked around to figure out who in the crap was being murdered in the store when I saw him. It was a kid about 8 years old who looked as if he was desperately trying to become Jabba the Hutt, and said kid was succeeding. Now, I have no problem with fat kids, I typically even think that they're pretty freaking cute. However, this kid was not, due mainly to the alligator tears that were rolling down his cheeks, the beet red color on his face, and the sounds coming out from his throat hole. 
It took me a minute to figure out what in the heck was going on in my aisle until I realized that this kid was throwing a fit because his parents wouldn't buy him three different trapper keepers, one of which was Hello Kitty. Normally, I'd just shrug and say, typical Saturday in Walmart, but oh no. This little B-word realized that his dad wasn't paying attention to him and was instead focused on the other's kids that I'm only assuming share some form of genetic makeup with this whiny beast of burden. This tees off the kid even more since he howls with rage and, here's where it gets insane, kicks his what looked like eight-month pregnant mother in the stomach. To her credit, this lady didn't womp the spoiled little monster's butt right in the aisle, no, she instead collapsed on the darn floor and had to be taken away by paramedics. And that little B-word took that as a sign that he could have all the trapper keepers he wanted. I watched this whole thing go down, and as the dad watched his wife get loaded into the ambulance, not one iota of, you're gonna get it later, came from him. Instead, the crap stain that kicked his mum started crying about being hungry and wanting chicken nuggets, which the dad then took him to get. This is why I hate people. I stopped shopping at Walmart when I went to college. The local Walmart was notoriously bad. Three times in a row I went there and walked down an aisle just in time to see a kid peeing themselves in the aisle and no parent was in sight. The city made big news when the Walmart men's restroom was found to have a makeshift crystal lab in one of the stalls. Our area was predicted for a moderate snowstorm, but the weather forecasts gave it ridiculous numbers, like they claimed we'd have six inches of ice and two feet of snow in one night. Us rational people knew, and were right, that we'd probably get four inches of snow. But many people swarmed the Walmart, and a few people made a Facebook page showing how devastated the store was in preparation for Snowpocalypse 2011. The Facebook page showed pictures as the store was swept clean within a couple of hours of ramen, wine, milk, and cheese. My favorite picture that someone put up was the 40-year-old man who had a shopping cart with 37 gallons of milk in it. Nothing else, just a crap ton of milk. That man sounds like the guy from your elementary school math problems. Okay, so I was leaving Walmart with my purchases. As I walked down to my car in the parking lot, I saw a pair of adult sweatpants sitting in a sort of pile they do when someone steps out of them, with a massive, messy crap on top of them. I had so many questions. Where did the person go after detonating these pants? Into the store? Just bottomless into their car with crappy butt cheeks? Amazing. I don't work at Walmart, but when I was halfway across the country visiting some friends, the Walmart in their town had a crystal lab bust in the men's restroom. Oh, good old Muncie, Indiana. I used to attend college in that town. I just graduated high school and took a job at Wally World since they always paid above minimum wage up here. On the most part, Canadian Walmart is completely different from the what the frick mecca that is the American one. I guess the main thing that stuck was during the summer. I was working as a truck unloader in the back and had to bring out a skid of diapers and such to the infant section. As I approached, I noticed a smell. At first I thought it was that gosh darn bird that always flew around. I figure I hadn't seen it in days, so maybe it had died somewhere around there and was stinking up the place. I dropped the skid off and went past the women's changing rooms, that's where all the girls who worked in clothing hung out. I was hoping to say hi to everyone, but I noticed that they delta split from that location. Reason they moved? It was the epicenter of the smell. To this day, I have never smelled anything quite like it. I've worked in a microbiology lab growing mold and fungi. I've worked in hospitals and smelled all sorts of nasty. I put in some time in pathology labs. Needless to say, I've smelled a whole bunch of horrible things in my life, but nothing compares to that Walmart scent. What was it, you ask? Well, it turns out that an elderly lady had gone into the changing room and taken a giant Coke can width grey-coloured crap with flecks of black in it and a bit of blood coating some of it all over the floor. The whole thing must have weighed two pounds easy. She wrote a little letter and left it in the room with the clothes she was trying on. All the letter said was, I am so sorry. Needless to say, I think Granny had something horribly wrong with her because crap doesn't smell like that. To this day, I assumed the black in the crap was dried blood from some internal issue, and I figured she tore her butthole pushing that monster out. The smell, though, ugh, it's like if you huff an abscess while smearing yourself with durian fruit while taking a dump. It was easily the worst smelling thing I've ever experienced. In conclusion, some grandma took a horribly thick crap on the floor which had blood in it. I feel like at least once a week I have to do one story that makes me gag, and ladies and gentlemen, that was it. Congratulations everyone, I'll see you on the next one. Just last week I was unloading a truck in the back and this morbidly obese woman hobbles up through the big associates only doors, bends over, and drops a load on the floor, pulls her pants back up and walks out. 
I got written up for yelling, what the actual frick, but after the managers looked at the camera, they thought it was justified for me to yell that and let me off with a warning. I don't know what happened to her, but the maintenance guys were teed off. I feel like Walmart is one of the few things where all of the stereotypes and stories you hear are actually super accurate. My experience, though, a very overweight woman with a walker strapped to the back of her electric wheelchair was drinking half and half straight from a carton while she threw loose pairs of sandals all over the floor. I have a friend who hasn't been to a Walmart in 15 years. He flat out refuses to go in for any reason. He's a pretty down-to-earth guy, not the type who thinks he's better than anyone else, but he avoids Walmart specifically because of the people who shop there. His reasons usually center around crying babies, overweight aisle cloggers, and the few weird old men who sit by the entrance or exit gawking at the college girls. One day, my friend and I were looking for a certain product before leaving town on a trip. We had just been to a few stores around town and I kept telling him, I know that this is in Walmart, we should just go there. Finally, he agrees to go visiting Big Box Land, but he will go into the Home Depot next door to look for a product while I go into Walmart. As soon as I step inside the door, I see a massive woman on a motorized shopping cart with her massive 12-year-old son standing on the back of it. She's screaming at him, saying, Now you get off of there, boy, or something like that. His retort, Frick you, mama, you ain't even handicapped. I got the product we need that day, but now I do my best to avoid Walmart as well. I saw this lady start screaming about a Golden Lab service dog being too close to her child. The child was sitting in a cart in the checkout line and the dog was calmly sitting on the floor behind her. The dog doesn't even bark, lick or move, nothing, and the woman gets ghetto and starts shouting at everyone in sight. She had to be escorted from the store and never got to buy her stuff. At least Walmart protected the real victim in this situation. People who don't believe that this stuff actually happens must have never worked in retail. I can assure you that this is an everyday occurrence around Atlanta. When you subscribe, make sure to hit the bell to turn on notifications. Put the playlist on in the background to finish listening to all the stories, or if you want some vibey music to put on in the background, check out Easy Mode. If you like Am I the Genius, give Am I the Jerk a shot. Everything linked in the description.